Good morning, uh, Gunilla Saltin, if I pronounce it in the right way. Very happy to have you in that conversation. And uh, maybe let's talk about uh, what is your actually, uh, uh, what, what are you actually doing as uh, the CEO of Mondi Uncoated Fine Paper? Maybe you explain it a little bit and introduce mm -hmm. yourself, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for the invitation. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to you today. Uh, so I am the, the CEO of Monday Uncoated Fine Paper and I guess I'm doing what everybody else is doing in similar positions. Uh, <laughs> that <laughs> and sounds I, so shy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you, you, I think the, the challenge right now is that I started in February and then in March Corona happened and we are a very decentralized location, uh, organization and to have all my closest colleagues in different locations without being able to, to go and actually see them is of course uh, a challenge. I can imagine but then it's not a normal job you are doing, then it's hardcore, <laughs> you jump just into the cold icy water. And uh, yes. what what were the first thing you have to be focused on in that extreme situation? I think uh, I, I had the advantage of, of, of starting in Monday six months prior to, to joining UFP. So I did have the opportunity to visit some of, of the mills and my colleagues before. But of course, in a situation like this, which is extremely stressful for everybody, Nobody really knows where the pandemic is going and all these lockdowns that happened in March. It is, of course, important to try to create a level of, of, of trustful collaboration fairly quickly. It's not easy, but everybody is, is affected personally at one way or another in this, in this uh, situation. So that was what I at least tried to do in the beginning. And of course, also understand which were the real challenges for us uh, right away. And I think I was uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the happy guy who was able to join your last press conference um, late in, in September, September 22nd. And it was a firework of, of innovations. So that, mean, uh, that means you have had the chance to really something like rethink your business, uh, reinvent your business. And the outcome was... Uh, new products and new ideas and, and wonderful also uh, um, um, corporations with Adobe stock and so on. Maybe you can tell a little bit about your press event and, and the outcome of that and what, what were the highlights. I think I, I just have to highlight also the what was really impressive about this because of course when the things that were presented in the, in the press conference in September they were not just invented the month before but to be able to sort of have the collaboration going and keep developing these products and also sort of have the timeline for September given the, the circumstances, I think was sort of the, the real achievements here. Uh, and, and like you pointed out, the, the collaboration with Adobe started of course much earlier than September and also the grass paper innovation and the, and the color copy club and, and color lock. But the thing was that we made, we, we we managed to keep those things happening during the pandemic and keep the innovation going in a remote setting. I think that is that is really impressive, especially in a time when when everything is sort of very unusual to keep focusing on, on what we need to do was a very I think that was a strength testament to the organization. I'm very much impressed by that. So that that means uh uh, all the preparation work was done and then the uh, uh, COVID-19 stopped you in the middle of, of, of everything. And uh, I think it's fantastic to be able to, to switch. Uh, we would say in Germany, you switch the horse on the fly during riding the horse. And uh, I, I can imagine that that was, uh, that was a fantastic job. And uh, how was... Uh, the, the team spirit, were people more shocked or got people more motivated to really uh, show uh, the beauty of digital communication also for a paper manufacturing company like, like Mondi? I, I think it, it, 
it, there were different stages, but but also I would say that when I joined, I was very much impressed by the the digital strategy that U of P has developed already before the pandemic. I mean, I, they've already sort of had the foundation to keep in contact with account with their customers and also to do marketing digital. So the foundation was there, and they and they also managed to to continue working as a team collaboratively in in a digital environment. Uh, so, I, of course, there were other things happening at the same time. The, the market development was challenging, to say the least. So, of course, that was also an initial shock. And then we just had to decide to, to keep working together and, and, and do what we can control. And I think that was a very good team effort in the end. Yeah, I had the chance to to talk to uh, some people out of your out of your team, like like Bernard Kanzler. We had that nice conversation. I think it was around May. So, uh, and at that time, he he also said for sure there is an impact uh, because when the printing industry, the whole printing industry is suffering, also the the suppliers are a little bit touched by that. But he said there were differences between commercial printing and packaging was quite stable, also the German market. That means uh, there was something like a, like a, what we say in Germany, Absturz. So it was really on, on, on the bottom line or in, in the valley. And now it's, uh, it's climbing uh, back again. Are you, um, uh, how, how is the, the status in, in, in your point of view? Are we back to a, normal business or not that normal actually if you if you look at last week's eurograph figures they are actually a little bit better for for ufp as a whole than they were last year so from that point of view it looks much better and if i look for for monday we also see that we are in a much better position than we were in the spring but i say that with caution because you also see all these hotspots and, and partial lockdowns coming. So to say that we're out of the woods and, and really can see see the sun now, it, it's difficult to tell. Of course, I, I'd like to be optimistic, but with caution, I think is, is good here. Yeah, um, caution is a good word, but my favorite one is confident. Normally I have my t-shirt with me and I have a hashtag uh, uh, con con confidence. Uh, would you say that um, all this, what you're talking about, is already part of the corporate culture inside your, your company? And also, uh, because I, I really admire Mondi also as a group, because we learned that uh, inside the group there are many, many activities uh, switching to uh, giving uh, from the from your factories around the world energy to the population so supporting uh, people outside the, 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 the business also with uh, with great uh, with great uh, things that, that that's a beautiful culture am I right or wrong <laughs> now that is absolutely right and and when it comes to the confidence part it's less about where where we are in the in sort of in the pandemic and and how that will develop the confidence part is that we know that that we will have a very good position we have a very good position in Monday we're fully committed to UFP and we know that our product portfolio and our people and our performance will will make sure that we come out of this as a winner so the confidence level there for sure is is extremely high but I also would like to 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 confirm what you say the so the community spirits that, that Mondi has in all the operating sites, I think is very impressive. I mean, taking, like you say, also uh, the donation of masks to local hospitals and, and yeah, really taking care of, of not just our production, but also the community surrounding, I think has, has been very impressive to me. And uh, what I also admire is because I, I know Monday for uh, for really a long time, and I saw how everything developed. And first of all, uh, Monday uh, uncoded fine paper was more or less in the toner business. Then inkjet came, and then also hybrid products. So you can also uh, you have also offers to the traditional offset printing world. Uh, what kind of uh, skills do 
do you need uh, or your team members? Can you give us a little bit an impression? Because, you know, I know younger people, I know experienced people. It's a good mix. But what are the special skills, the skills you and your customers can benefit from? I think from with the experience I have, I'd say the specific skill set that the organization as a whole has is the, is the passion here for both performance, but also to, to give outstanding customer service and listen to, to what the customer wants. I have, I have to say I've been extremely impressed by these initiatives to develop new products that actually benefit customers, like the new per graphica brand with all the different colors and, and different shades and, and the luxury packaging segment. It's when you look at those products, you should not underestimate the, the time and passion and the the try again that, that was needed to, to be able to achieve these results. And I think that is the sort of the, the key thing that, that we have that differentiates us from from the competition here. But as you say, of course the, the team has to be a, a mix of experience and and, and young people to, to benefit both from what's happening from the outside and what can be done on the inside. So, but the, the passion for the production and the products, I think, is, is very telling here. You can almost touch yeah. it. Yeah. And what I, what I learned as well uh, many years ago, so I was part of uh, different roadshows Monday organized uh, also in Dubai and in, in, in the Netherlands. And what I've learned is that when you want to be really a good paper manufacturer, uh, you are something like uh, very at, at, at the end of the value chain. But uh, I've learned that Mondi people are so, they are technology savvy, they are social media savvy and an end. So that means uh, uh, your team seems to have a great knowledge going really at the at the at the top at the beginning of the value chain, rethinking, uh, analyzing everything what is happening in the communicate marketing and communication processes. Is that is that right? So I think that is one of the also the strength that I've seen the thought through process on this catching fields campaign. If, if you've seen all the material that supports it and and how this Adobe's thought collaboration was developed, I think you it's difficult to find a match for that anywhere in any industry, actually, because there the really is from what the paper can do to what the customer needs, and it's, it's really thought through in a collaboration with uh, another completely different company. So, yes, I, I fully agree with you there. The skills that that is brought together has... It's really real strength and real value to us. Yeah, and when you talk about the customer, uh, it, it's not it's not a, a, a. I think there are no typical customers because you you address so many business areas, yeah. and uh, maybe you can explain a little bit this go to market approach because as far as I know it, for sure it's it's still a dealer business, but on the other hand, you have established already for a couple of years. Uh, a key accounting team uh, uh, creating special initial projects uh, and, and, and maybe you can explain that approach a little bit. I think what, what is really what is really extremely well done is like you say we have the merchant that's that is one of our key customers of course but then also the Monday team has spent a great deal of time identifying the end consumers or the end customers and what influences their decision making and what we can do to make their life easier and make it easy for them to, to deliver great projects and understand their creative processes. So all parts of our diff very different end customers from the sort of the person that's making a single project to somebody else that, that has many projects and, and oversees them. What what can we do to, to help them deliver perfection at their it's their job. And I think that process and, and how that works has also helped us develop the right products. Um, that means this, this new form of uh, key accounting, maybe it's something like uh, 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 you have customer experience uh, experts in your team. And when I understand you right, it's not only to push 
products and messages from the Mondi side. It's also to, uh, uh, to, to create feedback and this feedback goes back to Mondi and is influencing uh, also uh, the portfolio. Is that right? Yes, correct. And then at least by doing so, we can influence what, what we're going to develop next. So, so the next innovation will, of course, then be more, more tailored towards what our customers really need to, to perform. And I think that is really well, I mean, if you see the latest products, both the graph paper, but also the, the different shades in the graphica and, and how they can be utilized, I think that is something that is very clearly shown. And what, what I also admire when, when I was the first time uh, at Neusiedler in, in, in Austria, um, it, I was so impressed because I, I got immediately paper. Uh, you know, we have this paper, it looks so analog and so simple, but it's a high tech product. And yeah. Neusiedler was already, we talk about industry 4.0 and automation. This was already the fact 10, 12 years ago. And I think this is hitting your background because you come from this paper mill insights. You have those paper mill insights. Uh, could you give us a little bit an impression uh, how these production processes are organized and how you make sure that all those lovely engineers working there are happy with, with your new go-to-market approach? Are they happy to get feedback from customers? <laughs> I, I think what, what uh, is typical for, for our engineers and engineers that I've met in the past is that they are really, really challenged by pro problem solving. I mean, if you present something, the first instinct is usually, no, I don't think so. This can probably not be done. But give them an hour and they have started to think and then it can be done. And I think that was very significantly shown in, in the, the different colors and the different qualities of the graphic also because the, the story that I've heard is that it was impossible almost to, to do, but but given time and, and sort of the, the challenge and the problem solving skills, it was certainly very possible, but of course challenging. So I think the, the skill set in the mills, you need to, to, to present the challenge and they will they will pick it up and deliver on it. And I think that is really a, also something that is, is very impressive and, and, a, and a good strength to have. Not see any problems, but just see it as as a and what is also interesting for me because uh, I think uh, Per Grafica got launched something like three years ago and uh, starting not with a reduced offer but with a very clear focus and in the meantime we have a full range of new things uh, uh, creating uh, uh, and, and adding, adding value. Normally you think in the paper manufacturing business the time to market is not that fast. So, but uh, as you uh, uh, showcase it, uh, it, 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 it's almost in real time, in quotes. It, how, how could that happen to be so fast? I, I, I just have to say it's the difference here. It's the people that deliver, right? They have the passion, like I mentioned, and they also have the skills that's needed to, to make things happen quickly. And also they take the opportunities that they see from a market perspective, if there is an opportunity that presents itself for us to to fill or avoid that we can see we or niche, then then we also have a good skill set to match it with what is possible in the mill. And I think the sort of the 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 burning or the the, the intersection between the what what is seen in the market and what the mill then will take as a challenge and deliver on is is making this go as quickly as possible. So I think the collaboration has to be very strong, and both teams have to be challenged in the in the in the process here. And uh, how 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 could you measure if all those beautiful things we are talking about? Uh, in my opinion, it's 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 more or less still uh, a, a hidden secret. It's very beautiful, but it's uh, what do you think uh, uh, could uh, could create that effect that more people in the printing industry and also on the merchant side uh, in, in those big organizations, uh, uh, how can they catch up the spirit which is driving you and your team and, 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 and to create uh, beautiful results? 
But I, I think what, uh, yeah, we're doing what we can to, to of course, influence them. And I think they will also, they also see the, the possibilities here. Um, I, I really don't have a, a clear answer more than if, if we have a passion and it shows, then I'm sure also others will, will catch on. And looking at the fantastic products, almost by just touching them, it's, it's uh, yeah, you get the sense of, of the of the magic and the passion just by doing that. So I think the products will speak for themselves and, and we just have to let our professionalism and, and passion show. Uh, that, that's good to hear because uh, by, by chance I have... Uh, I was asked by by uh, Papyrus, uh, your 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 business partner, also for Switzerland, and I'm actually in in, in Switzerland. And we were talking about the initial story, how to uh, make more understandable uh, what is the beauty of of, of paper. And I thought um, to make it very short, in it, like in elevator pitch, I said it's the best user interface you can create to get. Uh, data converted into uh, a very emotional, uh, uh, emotional com communication. Would you see it like that? Because uh, I talked also to Papyrus. We we never saw a paper as a user interface, but in fact, I think it's like this, right? Yes, and it's also lasting, right? It, because I I do. I mean, we also work with a digital approach, like you said, but on a piece of paper. It, it will stay forever. I mean, if, if you have a photograph or a message or some something you, that you have written, it's really easy that with a new, some kind of technology uh, happening in your, your iPad or whatever, it's lost. But if you save it on paper, it's a lasting memory or it's a legacy that, that, that stays. So it's both sort of the unique quality of something that you took the time to specifically do but it also stays with the receiver, I think. And of course, we should not underestimate that if the, if the receiver doesn't really appreciate it that much, you can recycle it. So there is also a sustainability loop to it if, if the message is not lasting forever. But, but also the lasting aspect, I think, is, is important. And a word that I learned when I started the UFP, the haptics, that, that you also get the, not just the visual, but also the, the feel. Uh, yeah, the it's very emotional. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I think you mentioned uh, this this uh, this term uh, uh, sustainable. I think it's also important for all of us that uh, the digital world is realizing that uh, what they do is not that sustainably <laughs> sustainable because uh, it's it's energy consuming and 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 this is so different with paper. You just mentioned. Uh, recycling, but I think you have more on your schedule, and maybe you can uh, share a little bit um, uh, what Mondi and you in person understand by the term uh, uh, sustain to be sustainable. And there is also a claim sustainable by design in the meantime. Yes, for, I, I, I'd like to take it into slightly different parts. For me, sustainability is the crossing between social, environmental, and financial. So when all those three aspects coincide, then you have a sustainable solution. You cannot just do something for the environment if you don't have the other two. And and, and the same thing with, with financial. You cannot do, just do it for money. You have to have the other. So that is one really important definition for me to, to always keep in mind. And then for the other parts, I think it is important to realize that if you look, at, no industry is, of course, um, without footprints. That that is for sure. I mean, everything we use as humans has some kind of environmental footprint. But the beauty with the pulp and paper industry is that you have the growing trees that absorb carbon dioxide, and you cut them down to use it, and and you make use of the whole tree, both the the, the sort of the the chips and the barks, and and so it's a very sustainable way of using. You generate the electricity and the heat you need for the production process, as well as also possible to supply to surrounding communities. Produce a material that can be recycled many times, seven or, or more. 
And then when it's sort of done, you can you can burn it to use the energy again. On the same time, planting more trees that will absorb more carbon dioxide because the growing trees are the trick here. All trees don't absorb as much carbon dioxide because they are basically stagnant in, in their in their growth. So I think looking at the whole sort of cycle here, we have a very good setup to to have a sustainable industry in, in all these aspects using a natural resource that is renewable and recyclable and also can be compostable, of course. And for me, sustainable by design is combining that and also finding a solution that the customers appreciate. So we are designing our solutions that makes use of, of all parts, but also fulfill the requirements of, of the end consumer and our customers. So we are utilizing the material in a very responsible way. That sounds uh, uh, fantastic, and for sure it makes sense if, if a printed piece is done with passion in a beautiful way, you don't throw it away so fast, you know? <laughs> and that helps, that helps a lot also the brand owners uh, to, to, to be part of the life of their, of their uh, customers. Uh, I think this will be, sustainability will be an interesting topic and it's worth to get uh, part of further uh, uh, discussions, but I, I thank you very much for this first, uh, so at a, at a glance impression we, we can create now, because it's, I think it's very, very complex and, and uh, I think you, you, uh, you, you spend a lot of your time as, as a company to work on that permanently because things are cha changing so fast. But would you say we have good messages for the younger generation, which is, uh, with, is a little bit uh, shocked by the climate changes. Uh, so have, have a good message for those people as well? I, I would certainly say so, because if you look at, at how a responsible forest industry is operating these days, you take down one tree and use it, like I said, in, in sort of the, the circular way, but you plant three more trees to replace the first one. So, so we really is an industry that is responsible and we have lots of, of good initiatives and interesting opportunities for young people where they can also contribute to even minimizing our footprint even further. So for me, I would say this is an, an industry with a very, very bright future and also that is very responsible and, and has a story that, that it's definitely worth telling so that everybody can see how, how everything works here. That's, that's good to know, and uh, uh, so I want not to st st stress your, your schedule too much, so maybe a last point I, I want to discuss with you for today, and hopefully we have further conversations in, in the future. So at that point, everybody would ask a, a person like Steve Jobs, so Steve, what is next? And I ask Gunilla, Gunilla, what, what is next? I'm, I'm sure you will not sit down and, and do things like this, you will really... Uh, drive your passion and their team's passion forward. Could you could you give us a little bit some 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 outlook without uh, uh, telling secrets right now for sure? No, no secrets are difficult to tell because, because then they're not secrets. secrets. But but what I see for us right now is like you mentioned, we have launched these new products. So now our job is to make them well known and also to to make our customers really recognize them for for their true value so that is of course very important on the same time we are also constantly looking out for new opportunities and and see what areas we can we can further improve on both on the product side and also of course in in production so so for us it is really continue to to strive for 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 excellence in both product and and uh, production areas. Given that we don't know much about where the world will be a year from now, we still have many ideas that we will continue to work on. And we have proven that we can do it in, a, in an environment that is challenging. So keep the energy and, and move forward. Thank you very much for that wonderful uh, uh, conversation. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, I hope we, we can continue in a, in, a, in, a certain, in a certain rhythm. And uh, in any case, I will be aligned with, with your team and I will... Monty is always uh, 
one of the favorites on my on my different watch lists I have, and I'm always curious uh, to uh, to talk to people uh, like you. So thank you, thank you very much for that wonderful conversation. And uh, so we say hello uh, uh, to each other, right? Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you so, so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate that, that. And, and hopefully we also have the opportunity to meet in person in the not too distant future but really happy to meet you like this thank you very much thank you as well Gunilla. have a have a safe time uh, stay stay healthy you and your team thank you for the great conversation thank you very much